Celtic art is the art associated with the peoples known as Celts, those who spoke the Celtic languages in Europe from prehistory through to the modern period, as well as the art of ancient peoples whose language is uncertain, but have cultural and stylistic similarities with speakers of Celtic languages. Celtic art is a difficult term to define, covering a huge expanse of time, geography and cultures. A case has been made for artistic continuity in Europe from the Bronze Age, and indeed the preceding Neolithic Age however archaeologists generally use Celtic to refer to the culture of the European Iron Age from around 1000 BC onwards, until the conquest by the Roman Empire of most of the territory concerned and art historians typically begin to talk about Celtic art only from the Latin period onwards. Early Celtic art is another term used for this period, stretching in Britain to about 150 AD. The early medieval art of Britain and Ireland, which produced the Book of Kells and other masterpieces, and is what Celtic art evokes for much of the general public in the English-speaking world, is called insular art in art history. This is the best-known part, but not the whole of the Celtic art of the early Middle Ages, which also includes the Pictish art of Scotland. Both styles absorbed considerable influences from non-Celtic sources, but retained a preference for geometrical decoration over figurative subjects which are often extremely stylized when they do appear. Narrative scenes only appear under outside influence. Energetic circular forms, triskeles and spirals are characteristic. Much of the surviving material is in precious metal, which no doubt gives a very unrepresentative picture. But apart from Pictish stones and the insular high crosses, large monumental sculpture, even with decorative carving, is very rare. Possibly the few standing male figures found, like the warrior of Hirschlanden and the so-called Lord of Glaberg, were originally common in wood. Also covered by the term is the visual art of the Celtic revival from the 18th century to the modern era, which began as a conscious effort by modern Celts, mostly in the British Isles, to express self-identification and nationalism, and became popular well beyond the Celtic nations, and whose style is still current in various popular forms, from Celtic cross funerary monuments to interlaced tattoos coinciding with the beginnings of a coherent archaeological understanding of the earlier periods. The style self-consciously used motifs closely copied from works of the earlier periods, more often the insular than the Iron Age. Another influence was that of late Latin vegetal art on the Art Nouveau movement. Typically, Celtic art is ornamental, avoiding straight lines and only occasionally using symmetry, without the imitation of nature central to the classical tradition, often involving complex symbolism. Celtic art has used a variety of styles and has shown influences from other cultures in their knotwork, spirals, key patterns, lettering, zoomorphics, plant forms and human figures. As the archaeologist Catherine Johns put it, common to Celtic art over a wide chronological and geographical span is an exquisite sense of balance in the layout and development of patterns. Curvilinear forms are set out so that positive and negative filled areas and spaces form a harmonious whole. Control and restraint were exercised in the use of surface texturing and relief. Very complex curvilinear patterns were designed to cover precisely the most awkward and irregularly shaped surfaces. Background The ancient peoples now called Celts spoke a group of languages that had a common origin in the Indo-European language known as Common Celtic or Proto-Celtic. This shared linguistic origin was once widely accepted by scholars to indicate peoples with a common genetic origin in southwest Europe who had spread their culture by emigration and invasion. Archaeologists identified various cultural traits of these peoples, including styles of art, 
and traced the culture to the earlier Hallstatt culture and Latin culture. More recent genetic studies have indicated that various Celtic groups do not all have shared ancestry, and have suggested a diffusion and spread of the culture without necessarily involving significant movement of peoples. The extent to which Celtic language Culture and genetics coincided and interacted during prehistoric periods remains very uncertain and controversial. The term Celt was used in classical times as a synonym for the Gauls. Its English form is modern, attested from 1607. In the late 17th century the work of scholars such as Edward Lhuyd brought academic attention to the historic links between Gaulish and the Brythonic and Goadelic speaking peoples, from which point the term was applied not just to continental Celts but those in Britain and Ireland. Then in the 18th century the interest in primitivism, which led to the idea of the noble savage, brought a wave of enthusiasm for all things Celtic and Druidic. The Irish revival came after the Catholic Emancipation Act of 1829 as a conscious attempt to demonstrate an Irish national identity, and with its counterpart in other countries subsequently became the Celtic revival. Pre-Celtic periods The earliest archaeological culture that is conventionally termed Celtic, the Hallstatt culture, comes from the early European Iron Age, California. 800-450 BC. Nonetheless the art of this and later periods reflects considerable continuity and some long-term correspondences with earlier art from the same regions, which may reflect the emphasis in recent scholarship on Celticization by acculturation among a relatively static population, as opposed to older theories of migrations and invasions. Megalithic art across much of the world uses a similar mysterious vocabulary of circles, spirals and other curved shapes, but it is striking that the most numerous remains in Europe are the large monuments, with many rock drawings left by the Neolithic Boyne Valley culture in Ireland, within a few miles of centres for early medieval interior art some 4,000 years later. Other centres such as Brittany are also in areas that remain defined as Celtic today. Other correspondences are between the gold lunulas and large collars of Bronze Age island and Europe and the talks of Iron Age Celts, all elaborate ornaments worn round the neck. The trumpet-shaped terminations of various types of Bronze Age Irish jewellery are also reminiscent of motifs popular in later Celtic decoration. Iron Age Early Celtic Art Unlike the rural culture of Iron Age inhabitants of the modern Celtic nations, continental Celtic culture in the Iron Age featured many large fortified settlements, some very large, for which the Roman word for town, oppidum, is now used. The elites of these societies had considerable wealth, and imported large and expensive, sometimes frankly flashy, objects from neighboring cultures, some of which have been recovered from graves. The work of the German emigre to Oxford, Paul Jacob Stahl, remains the foundation of the study of the art of the period, especially his early Celtic art of 1944. The Hallstatt culture produced art with geometric ornament, but marked by patterns of straight lines and rectangles rather than curves. The patterning is often intricate and fills all the space available, and at least in this respect looks forward to later Celtic styles. Linguists are generally satisfied that the Hallstatt culture originated among people speaking Celtic languages, but art historians often avoid describing Hallstatt art as Celtic, as Hallstatt society became increasingly richer and, despite being entirely landlocked in its main zone, linked by trade to other cultures especially in the Mediterranean, imported objects in radically different styles begin to appear, even including Chinese silks. A famous example is the Greek crater from the Vix grave in Burgundy, which was made in Magna Graecia c. 530 BC, some decades before it was deposited. It is a huge bronze wine mixing vessel, with a capacity of 1,100 litres. Another huge Greek vessel in the Hochdorf chieftain's grave is decorated with three recumbent lions lying on the rim. 
one of which is a replacement by a Celtic artist that makes little attempt to copy the Greek style of the others. Forms characteristic of Hallstatt culture can be found as far from the main central European area of the culture as Ireland, but mixed with local types and styles. Figures of animals and humans do appear, especially in works with a religious element. Among the most spectacular objects are cult wagons in bronze, which are large wheeled trolleys containing crowded groups of standing figures, sometimes with a large bow mounted on a shaft at the center of the platform, probably for offerings to gods. A few examples have been found in graves. The figures are relatively simply modeled, without much success in detailed anatomical naturalism compared to cultures further south, but often achieving an impressive effect. There are also a number of single stone figures, often with a leaf crown, two flattish rounded projections, resembling a pair of bloated commas, rising behind and to the side of the head, probably a sign of divinity. The most elaborate ensembles of stone sculpture, including reliefs, come from southern France, at Roquepertus and in Tremont, close to areas colonized by the Greeks. It is possible that similar groups in wood were widespread. Roquepertus seems to have been a religious sanctuary, whose stonework includes what are thought to have been niches where the heads or skulls of enemies were placed. These are dated to the 3rd century BC, or sometimes earlier. In general, the number of high-quality finds is not large, especially when compared to the number of survivals from the contemporary Mediterranean cultures, and there is a very clear division between elite objects and the much plainer goods used by the majority of the people. There are many talks and swords, but the best-known finds, like the Czech head above, the shoe plaques from Hochdorf and the Waterloo helmet, often have no similar other finds for comparison. Clearly religious content in art is rare, but little is known about the significance that most of the decoration of practical objects had for its makers, and the subject and meaning of the few objects without a practical function is equally unclear. Hallstatt Gallery Late Hallstatt Gold Collar from Austria, 550 BC Gold shoe plaques from the Hochdorf Chieftain's Grave, Germany, 530 BC Pottery from Hunberg, Germany. The imported Greek Vix Crater, found in the Vix Grave, France. Latin style. About 500 BC the Lane, teen style, named after a site in Switzerland, appeared rather suddenly, coinciding with some kind of societal upheaval that involved a shift of the major centers in a northwesterly direction. The central area where rich sites are especially found is in northern France and western Germany. But over the next three centuries the style spread very widely, as far as Ireland, Italy and modern Hungary. In some places the Celts were aggressive raiders and invaders, but elsewhere the spread of Celtic material culture may have involved only small movements of people, or none at all. Early Latin style adapted ornamental motifs from foreign cultures into something distinctly new, the complicated brew of influences including Scythian art and that of the Greeks and Etruscans among others. The occupation by the Persian Achaemenid Empire of Thrace and Macedonia around 500 BC is a factor of uncertain importance. Latin style is a highly stylized curvilinear art based mainly on classical vegetable and foliage motifs such as leafy palmette forms, vines, tendrils and lotus flowers together with spirals, s-scrolls, lyre and trumpet shapes. The most lavish objects, whose imperishable materials tend to mean they are the best preserved other than pottery, do not refute the stereotypical views of the Celts that are found in classical authors, where they are represented as mainly interested in feasting and fighting. Society was dominated by a warrior aristocracy and military equipment, even if in ceremonial versions and containers for drink represent most of the largest and most spectacular finds, other than jewellery. The talk was evidently a key marker of status and very widely worn, in a range of metals no doubt reflecting the wealth and status of the owner. 
bracelets and armlets were also common. An exception to the general lack of depictions of the human figure, and of the failure of wooden objects to survive, are certain water sites from which large numbers of small carved figures of body parts or whole human figures have been recovered, which are assumed to be votive offerings representing the location of the ailment of the supplicant. The largest of these, at Source de la Roche, Chamelies, France, produced over 10,000 fragments, mostly now at clermont ferron Several phases of the style are distinguished, under a variety of names, including numeric and alphabetic series. Generally, there is broad agreement on how to demarcate the phases, but the names used differ, and that they followed each other in chronological sequence is now much less certain. In a version of Jacob Stahl's division, the early, or strict, phase, de Navarro I, where the imported motifs remain recognizable, is succeeded by the vegetal, continuous vegetal, Waldalgesheim style, or de Navarro II, where ornament is typically dominated by continuously moving tendrils of various types, twisting and turning in restless motion across the surface. After about 300 BC the style, now de Navarro III, can be divided into plastic and sword styles, the latter mainly found on scabbards and the former featuring decoration in high relief. One scholar, Vincent McGaw, has defined a Disney style of cartoon-like animal heads within the plastic style, and also an Opie de period art, C 125 C 50 BC. De Navarro distinguishes the insular art of the British Isles, up to about 100 BC, as style IV, followed by a style V, and the separateness of insular Celtic styles is widely recognized. The often spectacular art of the richest earlier continental Celts, before they were conquered by the Romans, often adopted elements of Roman. Greek and other foreign styles to decorate objects that were distinctively Celtic. So a talk in the rich fix grave terminates in large balls in a way found in many others. But here the ends of the ring are formed as the paws of a lion or similar beast, without making a logical connection to the balls. And on the outside of the ring two tiny winged horses sit on finely worked plaques. The effect is impressive but somewhat incongruous compared to an equally ostentatious British talk from the Snettersham Horde that is made 400 years later and uses a style that has matured and harmonised the elements making it up. The 1st century BC Gunderstrup cauldron is the largest surviving piece of European Iron Age silver, but though its iconography seems clearly to be Celtic, its style is much debated, and is thought by many to be more Thracian. To further confuse matters, it was found in a bog in Denmark. The Agris helmet in gold leaf over bronze clearly shows the Mediterranean origin of its decorative motifs. By the 3rd century BC Celts began to produce coinage, imitating Greek and later Roman types, at first fairly closely, but gradually allowing their own taste to take over, so that versions based on sober classical heads sprout huge wavy masses of hair several times larger than their faces, and horses become formed of a series of vigorously curved elements. A form apparently unique to southern Britain was the mirror with the handle and complex decoration, mostly engraved, on the back of the bronze plate, the front side being highly polished to act as the mirror. Each of the more than 50 mirrors found has a unique design, but the essentially circular shape of the mirror presumably dictated the sophisticated abstract curvilinear motifs that dominate their decoration. Despite the importance of Ireland for early medieval Celtic art, the number of artefacts showing Latin style found in Ireland is small, though they are often of very high quality. Some aspects of Hellstatt metalwork had appeared in Ireland, such as scabbard chapis, but the Latin style is not found in Ireland before some point between 350-150 BC and until the latter date is mostly found in modern Northern Ireland, notably in a series of engraved scabbard plates. Thereafter, despite Ireland remaining outside the Roman Empire that engulfed the continental and British Celtic cultures, 
Irish art is subject to continuous influence from outside, through trade and probably periodic influxes of refugees from Britain, both before and after the Roman invasion. It remains uncertain whether some of the most notable objects found from the period were made in Ireland or elsewhere, as far away as Germany and Egypt in specific cases but in Scotland and the western parts of Britain where the Romans and later the Anglo-Saxons were largely held back. Versions of the Latin style remained in use until it became an important component of the new insular style that developed to meet the needs of newly Christianized populations. However, while there are fine Irish finds from the 1st and 2nd centuries, there is little or nothing in Latin style from the 3rd and 4th centuries a period of instability in Ireland. After the Roman conquests, some Celtic elements remained in popular art, especially ancient Roman pottery, of which Gaul was actually the largest producer, mostly in Italian styles, but also producing work in local taste, including figurines of deities and wares painted with animals and other subjects in highly formalized styles. Roman Britain produced a number of items using Roman forms such as the fibula but with Latin-style ornament, whose dating can be difficult. For example a hinged brass collar from around the time of the Roman conquest shows Celtic decoration in a Roman context. Britain also made more use of enamel than most of the empire, and on larger objects and its development a champlevé technique was probably important to the later medieval art of the whole of Europe, of which the energy and freedom derived from insular decoration was an important element. Enameled decoration on penannular brooches, dragonesque brooches, and hanging bowls appears to demonstrate a continuity in Celtic decoration between works like the Staffordshire Moorlands Pan and the flowering of Christian insular art from the 6th century onwards. Continental examples Gold mounts on a bowl, adapting Mediterranean motifs, Germany, 420 BC, Disc brooch, France, 4th century BC. Parade helmet, Agris, France, 350 BC, decorated in a mixture of Mediterranean styles. Stator coin of the Parisiite tribe, 100-50 BC. British examples. The Battersea Shield, England, 350-50 BC, for display rather than combat. The Wandsworth Shield Boss, in the plastic style. Bronze Mount in British Disney style, 10 cm high, 1st century AD. The Waterloo Helmet, a unique find, probably not worn in battle, 